Next, here in France, more than 240 scientists from the National Research Institutes for Agriculture, Food and the Environment have signed an open letter calling on colleagues from all industries to resist pressure from agricultural lobbyists and uphold rigorous and independent research. The letter was published in Le Mans today and follows protests last month that saw farmers from the National Federation of Farmers Union block the entrance of the institute. The demonstrating farmers say recommendations made by the scientists there have led to environmental policies that have been detrimental to their businesses. Eliza Herbert reports. Farmers are among the first victims of climate change and ecosystem degradation. That's according to some of France's leading scientists, who say that agriculture and food systems are on the front lines of droughts, floods, storms and invasive species, among other risks that come with a warming planet. The group of 240 researchers from France's National Research Institute for Agriculture, Food and the Environment penned an op-ed in Le Monde on Monday, saying it is their responsibility to resist pressure from lobbies. The article comes in response to recent protests linked to the National Farmers Union and young farmers outside of their office. Demonstrators claimed they face a wall of constraints under environmental regulations and echoed common complaints by farmers in France who feel they are bearing the brunt of carbon-cutting targets. The authors were determined to prove that science also serves agriculture and that high-quality research is needed to address the monumental challenges of the 21st century, but that we must face the reality. The agricultural and food sectors significantly contribute to greenhouse gas emissions and are partly responsible for ecosystem degradation, public health issues and water resource depletion. It would also be misleading to suggest that farmers are solely to blame. They are integral and often constrained participants in a dominant agri-food system. They say it is up to leaders and public policy to support society and individuals through essential structural changes. But misinformation and polarisation are rife, and according to the group, media and politics can at times be influenced by lobby groups and their interests. Well, let's speak to one of the signatories of that letter, Philippe Dead. Delacour is an environmental economist at the National Research Institute for Agriculture, Food and the Environment and he joins us now. Thanks for being with us, Philip. Just talk us through how you and your colleagues felt that day when you saw those protests by farmers outside the Institute. Well, thanks for, for having me. Um, well, first I have to, to specify that I wasn't on site, my workplace is someplace else, but um, what I felt first is that I felt that it came uh, within a, a more global context uh, of polarization of viewpoints, um, some type of backlash also and pressure put, that is put on researchers, spe specifically working on climate change, um, against academic freedom too. Um, and the second thing that I felt was I didn't feel much uh, support from the government. Um, and that's why we decided to wrote this piece uh, in order to, to step up and to, to, to take our own defence uh, because we felt that the government wouldn't. And Philippe, tell us some of the recommendations you and your colleagues are making for farmers to lower their carbon emissions. Well, there, I think there are three types of things that are very important to, to have in mind. The first one is that uh, food and agricultural products are very specific good because they are related to uh, health, culture, but also ecosystem and the environment. And so it's important to have in mind that uh, agriculture is not an ordinary sector. It cannot be treated like any other sector. A second point that is important to have in mind is a wide variety of agricultural sector of, within the agric agricultural sector. There are many types of farmers, many types of agricultural firms. And so uh, there is no single solution to the problems that face uh, the agricultural sector. And that's why also research is, is so important, we believe. Um, and the final point is that the issue is very systemic. It's not only a, a problem of uh, agricultural firms and farmers, but it's a whole system because it goes from uh, agriculture and ecosystems to uh, consumption and through the processing and the retailing uh, industry. Uh, so when it, when it comes to, to, to farming practices, as an economist, I would tell you that uh, what is the most important is to give more value to uh, more virtuous practices and to give less value to practices that degrade ecosystem. 
So uh, ec economists would talk to you about payments for ecosystem services or uh, carbon taxes on the, on, on the contrary. But it's not enough because once again, uh, farmers, they are within a system that is, uh, that is larger than that just agriculture. Um, and so there are at least two other things that is very important to have in mind. The first one is that uh, the processing industry and the retailing have um, very important share uh, of the value uh, within the value chain. And so it's very important to consider the distribution of value across the value chain. Uh, and pot potentially better control the margins uh, that are that are made uh, by uh, by those uh, processing industries, um, and the other one is consumption because obviously consumers also have a responsibility. Um, we know that for climate change issues, for instance, it's important to decrease uh, the consumption of animal-based products toward more plant-based protein, for instance, to decrease also uh, the use of ultra-processed food, uh, both for health and the environment. And so it's a very systemic change that, uh, that, uh, that needs to happen. And for that, public policies are very important to support uh, the change, um, to support also the most, uh, the most vulnerable uh, actors uh, within this sector. And it's very important that public, uh, that public policy do not support the status quo, like trying to, uh, to, to, to fix things without uh, any change, uh, because we believe that the agricultural sector has, to, has some big change to, to make. Well, Philippe, what would you say to those farmers that argue that it's in fact the growing uh, regulatory restrictions that you and your colleagues are in some ways fueling that are actually hindering um, farmers' efforts to produce food with low emissions? What would you say to that? Well, what I would say is that basically some change uh, is necessary because uh, the agricultural sector is a very important contributor to, to climate change. So important changes are required, uh, and that's one of the role of research to uh, to, to help uh, find some solutions or some way to to, to help the transition. Um, the second one is that uh, agricultural sectors they are the, probably the, the most impacted sectors uh, by climate change uh, related to extreme weather events, droughts, floods, uh, and etc. Um, and here again, the role of research is to help find uh, some, uh, some paths toward more resilient uh, uh, agricultural uh, practices. Um, and so, well, and, and the final one is that obviously we, uh, how, our role is to, to have a better understanding of what is going on, that's what research do. Uh, we can have some policy recommendations uh, in the end, um, but our policy recommendations um, are really within like the objective to 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 be beneficial to the world society. So, uh, so in my opinion, we are not against uh, farmers or against agricultural firms, uh, but our aim is really to find some uh, some ways to to make the transition improve uh, the, the the situation. Philippe, good to talk to you. Thanks so much for joining us on the programme and giving us your insight. That's Philippe Delacour, who is an environmental economist at the National Research Institute for Agriculture, Food and the Environment here in France. Well, it's Thank time you. for the day.